Okay. The topic is the Tennessee State University football program, and we're talking to Coach James Reese, the uh, head football coach uh, at Tennessee State University. And of course, uh, Coach uh, Reese, we uh, promised that we'd give you an opportunity during this second segment to uh, talk about the Tennessee State University uh, football program from your own perspective, having had an opportunity to play under uh, some of the individuals that we consider to be legends mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Tennessee State University uh, football. Nick, so, so let's do it from that pr perspective. Well, at, at this point, uh, it's hard to say that the program has come full circle because the foundation that has been laid for the program is so great. Uh, you had the guys that played in 56. You had the teams that Coach Mary coached that never had a losing season. So uh, that type of uh, tradition, that type of uh, burden to carry is, is tough. It's, mm -hmm. it's not something that you can say, okay, we're going to go out and we're going to turn this program around. Turn it around from what? Because mm -hmm. Tennessee State has always been, been there. Mm -hmm. You know, a mm -hmm. great football program has a great football tradition. Uh, and that's something that we, that's a torch that we have to carry. That's a torch that I challenge our young men today to carry. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to sit them down and teach them about Coach Merritt and what he meant to Tennessee State mm -hmm. and the Nashville community about. Uh, how everybody used to get up on Sunday morning and look forward to seeing the big John Merritt show mm -hmm. and see him talk about TSU football and come and come to know it and be able to relate to it. Uh, and for me and uh, one of my assistants, Coach Owens, uh, having the opportunity to play for Coach Gillum mm -hmm. gave us a link to that uh, legendary person uh, mm -hmm. uh, to that time and mm -hmm. we're able to sh share some of these things uh, mm -hmm. with the players that we had today and let them know that you know when you walk out on that field you're just not walking out there for yourself you represent Tennessee State the players that came before you the players that's gonna come after you and your family as well so you out there representing an uh, institution Mm -hmm. And now, f and I tell them players, I players all the time, the Tennessee State University football program is bigger than you. Mm -hmm. No one person makes that program up, and so we try to push those guys to be the best because we know uh, the, tra the tradition that mm -hmm. this program has and the tradition that uh, we would like to see it maintain. Mm -hmm. What about your schedule, uh, Coach, in terms of looking over, uh, I think that that schedule has uh, been finalized, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I'm not sure whether it has been published or whatever, but uh, what about uh, the schedule, uh, since uh, many folks will have an opportunity to uh, see the show uh, Sunday morning, uh, what, what about your schedule? Here? Well, we have 12 games scheduled at this point, and uh, a lot of road games, uh, but the important games, uh, uh, at home doing, towards the end of the season uh, when we get into the conference. Uh, we'll open up with South Carolina State University uh, in Orangeburg mm -hmm. and we'll come back and we'll play Prairie View in the John Mary Classic, uh, mm -hmm. which has been a you know, great tradition for us to start off the season. Unfortunately, we mm -hmm. won't be able to start off the season mm -hmm. with the John Mary Classic this year. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we'll go to Memphis in our annual Southern Heritage Classic versus Jackson State. Uh, come back and we're scheduled to play Gremlin in Las mm -hmm. Vegas. Uh, then we go to Atlanta and play Florida and m in the Atlanta Football Classic, mm -hmm. which has been a uh, traditional game that we've played. And after we do that, then we get into our conference a little bit and we'll play Southeast Missouri mm -hmm. uh, in Cape Girardeau. And it's the first time we've been to Cape Girardeau in about three years. So uh, that'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll come back and we'll play Alabama A&M uh, there for their homecoming. And after that, we'll have an off week, and then we get into the meat of our schedule. We'll, we'll open up with UT Martin for homecoming on October the 26th. Uh, then we'll play Eastern Illinois at home, and then we'll go play Murray State. Then we'll come back and uh, end the season with Tennessee Tech and Eastern Kentucky. And the Eastern Kentucky game is the Thursday night game in Adelphia. So uh, we, have a, uh, we have a big task in front of us. And all of these games, all these home games will be played in Adelphia yes. uh, Stadium this, uh, this year, as uh, last year. Yes, all the home games will be played mm -hmm. in Adelphia. 
Now, you talk about the uh, uh, classics, and you're talking about the heritage, and uh, you're uh, talking about uh, some of the more popular cities uh, in the southern parts of the United States, Atlanta, and et cetera. Uh, here, you are able to draw some 60 and 70,000 persons uh, uh, for these particular games. Talk about that. Uh. Well, it's a, it's a great, great time. Uh, we're able to, both the classes that we go to traditionally, the classic in Memphis and the classic in Atlanta, uh, they're equal distance between both the schools. Uh, uh, in Memphis, uh, it's three hours from Jackson, three hours from Tennessee State. Both schools have large alumni bases in the city of Memphis, and our fans like to travel. And anytime we get together uh, along with the bands, it's just a great uh, mm -hmm. football atmosphere. Same with Florida A&M in, um, in Atlanta. It has been a uh, traditional game for Tennessee State and Florida A&M to mm -hmm. play. And I think uh, a while ago we took a break for about eight years, and the fans were eager to get it back. And once that game was reestablished, it has just taken off. And we've met in Atlanta and played uh, for the last few years. And the fans have definitely c came out. And the city of Atlanta has embraced it and come out. Mm -hmm. So I think that uh, it's a good atmosphere for our young men to go and mm -hmm. play in and get the opportunity to play in two major cities, one being a, a pro facility but we play at a pro facility at home, so uh, they get kind of used to that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they really do. And, and, and of course, uh, uh, Cole, uh, uh, Coach uh, uh, Reese, when you talk about uh, the heritage, the classics, and et cetera, over the last minute that we have before we uh, have this break, uh, you're talking about not only a football game, but it seems that the whole city and all the entire region become involved in this kind of economic op operation and enterprise and et cetera. Those two games, uh, the game in Memphis and the game in Atlanta, the cities, both cities have embraced uh, both the games and they have tremendous support, tremendous sponsorship and they definitely have the people there and they definitely come out and to see the teams play. And, 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 and so, Coach, uh, we've got about a uh, 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 half minute left before we come to our third segment for today. And uh, so let's sort of uh, prepare you for what we'd like to do during this final segment as well as to uh, sort of give our audience some idea of where we're trying to go in terms of tr getting this information. Let's have you during this last segment uh, uh, to talk about uh, some of your prospects and your stars, which is to say that uh, certainly you've got some individuals out there that you think ought to be highlighted and okay. it will do them good to hear their names uh, on, in this uh, particular situation. And of course, uh, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. 